Hello guys and gals, and this is Vlog Friday, or Vlog Friday, I'm not sure exactly how it's pronounced, but anyways, this should be episode 44, if I'm not mistaken. Um, this one's going to take a bit of a personal tone, and I'm not sure if I'm actually going to get to the um, seven points here, even, because there's a topic that I really wanted to talk about that might take the whole amount of time, I don't know. Anyways, um, as always, I always start this with, um, with, uh, something that's separate from the, uh, seven points. Um, and so, this is actually going live the day of. This week I've been basically almost doing videos the day they're basically required. Just see how that goes, but, um... Usually I record these well in advance, but this time I wanted a more personal touch. Anyways, what we're going to talk about is, um, this time, for episode 44, is, um, dealing with mental illness. Now, according to the DSM-4, or it's probably up to the DSM-5, Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. Um, according to that, everyone would have at least one mental illness. On the conservative side. At least one. So, um, and that's one of the first things you learn in psychology. That's basically Psychology 101. Especially when you talk about the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, which is basically the manual they use to... Um, diagnose mental illness. Um, anyways, what I do want to say first off, and the most important point, I, I think, anyways, when dealing with this uh, topic, is um, that people are people. Even people with mental illness, and sometimes even people with severe mental illness, or mental handicaps, they're, they're still people. I mean, it doesn't matter what the nature of the mental illness is. People are going to be people. Um, it doesn't matter how much the mental illness changes their personality or makes them less them. They're, they're still people. And I want to put that out front because I'm going to be revealing some things here. Um, anyways, um, I want to talk a little bit about my grandmother. Um, she passed away, I believe, in late December of 2019, because I remember it was before the coronavirus, you know, really took over, and, um, I have to say that I'm, it was probably a blessing that she passed when she did, especially with all the, you know, the coronavirus stuff, it's probably something that she probably couldn't have handled very well. Anyways, um... Late in life, she developed something, and I'm going to try to um, give some theories on what exactly happened, because um, it was really, really strange. Um, and when it first happened, I thought she was joking, you know, because there's sometimes when she would be kind of jokey, but um, late in life, something happened. Now, she was always a person that worried profusely. I mean, when it, she was always worried about something. And that was just basically her nature. Um, later in life, um, she started thinking, and not in a creepy way, but she started thinking that somebody else was living in the house. And, um, and so she'd ask me, well, See, so she'd, she, she'd say, well, where's Kevin? And I'm like, um, well, he's at work. No, the other Kevin. So in her mind, there were actually two Kevins. So um, somewhere she created this other person. And at first I was, when this, and now, when this started, you know, I, I tried to correct her. And um, she'd get rather violent or, you know, agitated or angry. And so it got to the point where I just basically went along with it. We both did. Both me and my dad went along with it 
whenever she'd ask, we'd say, oh, well, he's so-and-so somewhere, or he's fine, trying to assuage her um, worry. But um, it's really, really strange, because I never really figured out what was happening with her, or, or why that happened. Um, first, I found that kind of creepy, you know, that she would think that there would be somebody else living in the house. And there was no real logic behind it. So eventually we just went along with it and um, told her what she wanted to hear because otherwise she would get kind of... She'd get kind of um, threatening and stuff like that. Um, another thing that really was odd, I never really told anybody about this, but she would have dreams some nights um, and it would be weird. Um, my room at that time was downstairs. She'd sleep in the living room on the couch. That was basically where she was comfortable, and I would sleep in the room next, you know. And there'd be times when she would have these nightmares, and um, I'd come out and find out what's wrong, and she would basically recite paragraphs. And I don't know where the paragraphs are from. I never recorded them. I could have. I just never. Really, it never really occurred to me. Um, but she would recite paragraphs, you know, almost as if they were from a book, um, I, I only remember one of them, and I never really looked up if these paragraphs were actually from books. Um, but um, one paragraph, and paraphrasing it because I, I I wrote it down somewhere and I don't remember where. One paragraph was um, so she she dreamed something about a guy in a nursing home, and she would say something like, "Well, he's not really very aggressive or forceful." And only the one who yells the loudest gets the help or something. And, I mean, then later in the morning, she would never remember that she even said this stuff. And it would be like paragraphs of stuff that she would say. And I don't know where she got it. Which was always kind of strange. Um, and again, the fact that she had these um, things happen didn't make her any less of a person. Um... And I honestly don't believe it was Alzheimer's or anything like that. Um, but yeah. Another person I'd like to talk about is my aunt. And um, she's a, she was a, a, a charming person. Really, really one of the nicest people there, there is. Very talented. Gifted writer. She used to write songs and stuff like that. But she also, um, I think she had trauma early in life, I remember right. Um... She used to, um, I think, be ins inspect trucks. Uh, you know, the big semi-trucks. Anyways, um, eventually she developed um, a combination of several really bad things. Um, one was fibromyalgia. And if you don't know what fibromyalgia is, it's basically a nerve disorder. And it's really, really terrible. Um, and she also developed irritable bowel syndrome, which was also, I would say, argu arguably just as bad. Um, one of the problems, though, was that she would self-medicate, and I will clarify that it was over-the-counter stuff, and she would, like, take medicine and forget that she took it, and so she would take more. And um, she was still an amazing person. I'm not going to discount that at all. Wonderful, wonderful person. Um, there'd be times when she'd sleepwalk, and... Um, Stuff like that. I do recall one one thing, though. I never really figured out what it was. Um, it might have been an interaction between some of the medications she took or something, but I witnessed something or heard something. My room was, well, between the living room, where my grandmother would sleep, always sleep, and the bathroom. And um, I remember one morning... Um, my grandmother wasn't home, but my aunt was, and she was in the bathroom, and I would hear her talking in three distinct voices, and it was really, really strange. I, I mean, she wasn't trying to be funny or anything, there were just these three distinct voices, and they were having a conversation. Um, and I don't even know if she was awake when this was happening, because there would be times when she would fall asleep on the toilet. But anyways, um... She would basically talk in these three separate voices, and I don't even remember what they said, but I just remember it was really, really strange. 
Um, granted, um, I don't think, or I haven't really done research on it, but I don't, I'm pretty sure that it wasn't anything like demon possession or anything like that. Um, at least in demon possession, at least in the Christian context would be demon demonization. Um, I don't think it was that though. I'm, think that basically the medic the the conflict between the medications she was taking was causing several of these personalities to come for come out you know um she she didn't have multi-personality disorder i'm not saying that that's why it was so strange um i'm just think that um maybe that interaction between the medication was bringing out three separate personalities Anyone who is who knows about multi-personality disorder will know that there can be all these personalities have different voices. And I mean they'll all be coming from the same person. I believe that this was um when uh, I believe that um Kathy Reichs went into this in greater detail in one of her books. I don't remember which one, but there was one about someone who was suffering from multi um from um multi-personality disorder, and they would basically talk in different language, um, talk in different voices, and, um, also Split, that was another really good movie that basically categorized this, and basically, sometimes each personality wouldn't know what the other one was saying, or would remember what the other one would say, I think, but anyways, again, wonderful person, um, that was just something that I never really understood. Um, now if I can go back to my grandmother, um, there was kind of a unique case, um, when my dad was born, well, basically, um, my grandmother was going to have twins when my dad was born, or, you know. But there was a tubal pregnancy. The egg didn't quite get all the way, you know, where it was supposed to, so it was in the tube. So they had to go in and remove it. And um, that might have been the... It was too young. I mean, you couldn't tell because it was at such an early stage of development. But it was theorized that that might be the only girl that she would ever have because she had four boys and then they adopted one. A, a, a boy, yeah. But anyways, so... I always thought that maybe she thought that she had another son because of the tubal pregnancy and that maybe later in life she remembered the tubal pregnancy and maybe she thought that maybe she actually had the child. Again, that was just a theory of mine and it might not even be true. Like I say, no one ever actually, I can never actually figure out, you know, why she kept thinking that she had another son. Um... Also, I thought that maybe um, her worry about people might have caused this this um, extra son to um, materialize or something like that. Um, basically, from what I gathered, um, this second Kevin was a, an amalgamation of basically me and my dad's traits. And why I thought that, I don't know. It's been so long ago that I don't remember. Basically, um, for a year or so, a year or two previous to her passing away, that we moved her to a nursing home because she got to the point where she couldn't take care of herself. So, um, all of this is really old, old, old information. And it's been about 15 minutes of me just talking about this. So we are not going to go, go, get into these seven points. I just want to go more in depth into um, mental illness. And um, basically, again, to reiterate, to say again, to capitalize on the fact that people are going to have mental illnesses. But it doesn't make them any less of a person. Um, that's always something to take into account, is that people are people, and nothing changes that, and certainly not mental illness. Um, we live in a society where um, it's kind of really easy to tag or label people 
and um, it isn't something that we should do. Um, just because someone might change due to a mental illness, maybe they have a 180 um, personality switch. They're still a person, and you always need to remember that. Um, I found this episode to be deeply personal because um, it involved people that, family members, you know. Um, and I just wanted to share some of my um, experiences with mental illness. Um, but yeah. I guess that this is where I'm going to end it because I should probably get this uploaded so I can um, get this done in time. But, um, yeah. Always remember that people are people. Regardless of uh, regardless of circumstances or situations. Um, people are still going to be people. Um, so anyways, if you found this at all interesting, then um, make sure you like and subscribe. Now, I'm probably going to have a video next week that's going to be also kind of personal. I'm really going to go in-depth into um, something really interesting. I won't say what exactly yet, just in case I change my mind. But um, look for that near the beginning of the week next week. Because I do want to do a video that should be kind of special and interesting. But anyways, um, thanks for watching, everyone. Um, if you want to support me in any way, or if you want to join the Discord server, all the information will be in the, in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching, everyone, and have a great day.